Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I am super excited to be sewing along with you the Bailey Bat Bag, or it's the Bailey Bat, Bailey Backpack, but <laughs> I keep calling it the Bailey Bat Bag, which is fine. Um, this is another Cat Seopia pattern. As you can tell, it is absolutely adorable and amazing. These wings do come off. They are um, connected to the bag with snaps. So you can have the wings on or off depending on your mood. With the wings on, it makes for a really fun look. With the wings off, it makes a really classic looking backpack. Um, let me show you some features of this bag. So we have a front pocket with magnetic snap, a back pocket with magnetic snap. Check out the zipper. Like how amazing is that? It's a double zipper closure. And on the inside, I just did one slip pocket in my usual way that I do, or zipper pocket. Um, in the pattern, there is also the optional slip pocket for the inside. I did not do that. Um, for the pattern, the only things I did different, and it was because I didn't have any webbing um, in my stash here, is I changed the backpack strap. Um, I just used one 54 inch crossbody strap and an O-ring, um, and that makes perfect mini backpack straps. You only need the one strap, which is amazing. Um, I also moved my D-rings up because I did it this way, whereas in the pattern, they come from like here to here and here to here for the two straps. So my straps are done a little different. Plus I didn't do the um, rounded straps like she has in the pattern. I just did flap straps and I made it so they can flop down because we all know that is my preference. Um, this vinyl here is something I had in my stash that I bought prior to COVID. It's from My Punk Broidery. Um, my black vinyl is from Galaxy Customs. All of my hardware is from MLI Bags, except for my zipper is from Blue Calla and my zipper pulls, I mean, check out how cute they are. They're bats, they're from Brutalicious Designs. Um, and my lining fabric. I don't know. It's just something I had in my stash. Got it from Fabricland, I'm sure. Um, interfacing in this bag, my cotton pieces are all backed with uh, EB Fuse Light from Emmeline Bags. Um, my main stabilizer is uh, Pretty in Pink So Foam from Galaxy Customs. I have a piece of Peltex in the bottom for stability. And of course, in the back winds, I also have Peltex in between the layers. I did do Giardini edge paint along the sides and I did a top coat of glitter lights um glitter top coat from Tandy Leather I don't know if you can see the glitter so I, I painted with the Giardini and then I top coated with this glitter and I don't know if you can see it is like very subtle but very fun um what else what else thank you Bethany for allowing me to do this tutorial before we get started, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If you do end up liking uh, this uh, tutorial, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you want to support my channel further, you can always buy me a coffee. That link is down below. So without further ado, let's get to making this bat backpack. In case you're going to need some rivets. Number five zipper tape. Three number five zipper pulls two to three magnetic snaps. Now, if you're doing the backpack straps like me, you'll need two swivel clasps, a slider, an O-ring, and then two D-rings. And for the flop down handles like I'm doing, four rectangular rings. You need your crossbody strap piece. And this is what you will be using your D-rings and your O-ring and your swivel clasp for. Your two handle pieces. Again, I'm using my rectangular rings to make them flop down, as well as this, you're going to need four connectors for those flop down handles. An O-ring and two D-ring connectors if you're doing them like me. The D-ring connectors are in the pattern. You're going to need four pieces of your back wings, two sets mirrored to one another, and one mirrored set you will put some Peltex outside of the seam allowances onto the back. Your zipper panel, you're going to need your two cotton pieces and then your two exterior pieces. You want to cut the foam about a half inch away from where the zipper will be installed. 
you're going to need your two lining main pieces and your two exterior main pieces. Again, I have my main pieces backed with uh, foam. Your uh, bottom pieces, I have Peltex underneath the foam there on my exterior piece. Your two exterior side pieces and lining pieces. And then your two exterior side pocket pieces and lining pieces. Your front slip pocket and lining and your back slip pocket and lining and then your zipper pocket lining pieces. You're also going to need some cam snaps or snaps of some sort to attach the wings. Okay, so let's work on the wings first. So I'm going to take the um, set that has the Peltex on the back. I'm going to use my pattern piece and I'm going to mark my placement for the male side of my um, snaps. My snaps I just got off of Amazon. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and install the male snaps on each of these pieces in the five places on each piece. Okay, that is done. So now what I've done is I've cut little slits along the lines for my uh, decorative stitching. I wanted to follow exactly what Bethany had in the problem or in the pattern. And I'm just taking my Tandy leather um, marking pen and marking in those slits to give myself guides for my decorative top stitching. You can also draw your own or wing it. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there, wing it. <laughs> Okay, now that's, once that's done, now just where the magnetic snaps is, I'm going to go and draw a straight line right from this corner to this corner like so. Again, these are all guides for when we take this to the machine to sew them together. Okay, so you can also glue here. I'm just going to use some double-sided tape. My machine loves, it doesn't um, have any issues with double-sided tape, but if it does, definitely use some glue here. Just make sure your glue is completely dry before you do your top stitching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and put them wrong sides together, matching up the edges as close as possible. If there's some overhang, that is okay. We're going to trim it all up evenly here once we have everything sewn in place. And then we're going to go ahead and we are going to sew along the exterior of this with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and then as well go along all of the lines that we drew. So I found it easiest to start with the rectangle around the uh, snaps first. Take it nice and slow because these will be seen on both sides. Make sure your bobbin thread is also nice and tidy because that will be seen on the other side. And then once that rectangle's done, go ahead and work along the exterior all the way around the outside perimeter of the bat wings. Make sure your needle is down before you pivot, pivot around the corners. Okay. 
and then backstitch to end that. And then we're going to go back in and do the lines that we drew down the, um, the bat wings. Make sure to backstitch at the start and stop of each of these lines. If you had an embroidery machine, you could definitely have the embroidery machine do the stitching for you. Okay, so this is all done. I've done both wings. So now I'm just going to take my scissors in and cut both layers nice and even with each other to get ready for edge painting. Edge painting is completely optional. I just like how it gives it a nice finished look. I do have a class on how to edge paint in the description below. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and make my handles and crossbody straps off camera. Again, I have classes for those two things down in the description below. Okay, so now we are going to make our connectors for our um, crossbody strap for the O-ring and the D-rings. So I've got the pieces here. I made a line down the center. I'm going to fold the long edges down to that center line. And then take these to the machine and top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance on the folded sides. I've taken my four connector pieces for my drop down handles and I've done the same thing folding them to the center, but we are going to do them slightly different. So you're going to take your four rectangular rings. Again, this is a brandy thing. This is not in the pattern. You're going to take a little bit of double sided tape on the back of this and you can do this with a domestic. It is outside of the seam allowances. Grab a rectangular ring and fold this wrong size together. Fold down an inch or so to the center and bring the bottom part up just like so. And then I just grab a little alligator clip just to hold that in place. Well, I will in a moment here. And I'm also going to draw a line three quarters of an inch down from that folded edge. Do that with all four. Okay, so our main panel piece, we are going to use our pattern piece as a guide. I made a little slit at the top of the one inch mark here. That is where I'm going to place the fold of my connectors. So I'm just making that mark here. While I'm here, I'm also marking the bottom and top centers of my main panel piece before I forget to do it. Okay, and on the back of my connector, I'm taking a small piece of double-sided tape and I'm going to line the folded edge right at the bottom of the rectangular ring with that line that I just drew for my connector placement. You will do the same with the back panel. And then we're going to stitch around here in a box at the machine. So I'm pulling my threads long because I don't want that ugly backstitch um, gathering of thread. So I'm pulling the stitches long. I am not backstitching. I am going along the bottom with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance up to that uh, line that we drew. At this point you want to pull your front thread through to the back. Go across that line down again. And as you come to where uh, we started stitching you want to make sure that your needle ends and goes down in that first hole that we created when we started stitching. Pull your threads long, tuck on your bobbin thread, pull that top thread through, and tie those four strands in three or four knots. This gives us a nice endless top and or, or nice seamless top stitch on our connectors without um, thicker thread in the start and stop areas. Because I'm using a nylon bonded I also like to uh, burn my threads just to make sure they're more intact. So we've done that with all four. I've gone ahead and put some rivets in back with some deck of all heavy scraps to make sure um, we're nice and secure. Now we are going to do our female snap on our front main panel. Again, using your pattern piece and making a mark where the placement is. I'm going to take the lining side of my front pocket and do the same thing. And this will be the male side of my magnetic snap on the lining piece. So go ahead and install those female part on the main, male part on the lining side of the slip pocket. So that is done. I also back them with Decaville Heavy for extra security. And I like to put a little piece of Gorilla Tape or duct tape over top of those prongs um, so I know they won't wear 
um, onto uh, the lining sides. Okay, so now our slip pocket for the front, we want to put it right sides together, clip it together along the top. And then we're going to take this to the machine and sew across this top with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now when you get to that little pointy part in the center, put your needle down and pivot to get a nice uh, shape here. Now we want to pull these wrong. Okay, right where that little corner was, I just did a little snip just to make it so I can get a nice sharp point there. When I pull these together, wrong sides together, finger pressing that seam and holding it with some clips. Then we're going to go ahead and top stitch along the top here with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and then continue around the other three sides basting the lining and the exterior pieces together. Okay, so you can see my bat wings. Um, I got them all edge painted and they look lovely. So now I'm taking my back slip pocket panel and we're lining up the line, the pattern um, where it says slip pocket line at that dashed line. And I'm marking my five spots where I will be putting the female side of our um, snaps. Another way you can do it is fold at that line and line it up right at the top and mark it again. I just realized my son is doing laundry. I apologize if you can hear my washer in spin mode behind us here in the background. Okay, so go ahead and install your female snaps in each of those places. Now just double check that everything lines up well and everything snaps into place, which mine do. And then go ahead and just take the wings off and set them aside for now. Okay, so now we want to do our magnetic snap for our back slip pocket. So again, using our pattern pieces, we are going to do the markings on our exterior main panel and on our lining panel of our back slip pocket. Put the male on the lining and the female on the exterior. And we are going to assemble this slip pocket in the exact same fashion we did with the front slip pocket, except for it's a nice straight edge across the top. So once again, 3 eighths of an inch. Flip it wrong sides together, finger pressing that top seam and securing it with clips. And then you're going to go ahead and top stitch this across that seam and then baste the other three sides together. And that is our back slip pocket done. Okay, so now we're going to take our two main panels. We are going to attach our slip pockets via the straps. Make sure it's nice and centered and straight. And then we're going to go ahead and baste these onto our main panels. 
Okay, so now we are going to work on our backpack uh, connectors. So for uh, the O-rings and the two D-rings, you want to put a little bit of double-sided tape at the bottom, put your hardware on, and fold it wrong sides together like so. Again, the O-ring is for my way of doing the backpack strap. If you want to do it as per pattern, make sure you follow the pattern. Okay, so here are our markings. If you were doing it as per pattern, you would be attaching the webbing here and the connector at the bottom using your pattern pieces for your placement. Because we're doing it my way, um, so I'm going to center my O-ring at the center of this. And I've cut my connectors at a half inch angle and I'm measuring two inches up from the bottom and that is going to be the placement of my D-ring connectors. And you can see how cutting it at that half inch angle makes it so the D-rings angle up which will make it a lot more comfortable for the way I've done the backpack straps on the back. And then you go ahead and you baste these in place. Okay, so for our side pockets now, so you want to take your uh, side pocket exteriors and linings on one short edge and sew them together with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. These slip pockets are done in the exact same fashion we did our front and our back slip pockets. Just make sure you are sewing them at the shorter edge. Flip them wrong sides together, top stitch, and baste the other three sides. Okay, now we're going to take these pockets and our exterior side pieces and we are going to center the bottom edges with one another. Then we're going to base these on around those three sides. Okay, so now we have that. We're going to do our bottom panels for the lining and the exterior at the same time here. So the raw edges, the bottom part of our um, side pockets, you're going to line up with the bottom part or the bottom section. The bottom piece, if I get my names right. And we're going to sew across there with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do the same with the lining pieces, but you're going to do it with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on the lining pieces. Now we also want to top stitch the seam into place. So we are going to press it in a way that the seam is pointing towards the bottom panel and top stitch through the bottom panel to hold that seam in place on both sides and also on the lining pieces. Okay, so now let's work on our zipper panels. As you can see, I have cut my foam a half inch outside of where we will be putting our zipper. I do not have fusible foam, so I did not keep it out of my seam allowances because I do know my machine can handle it, but you definitely, definitely, definitely want it out of the zipper um, panel section. So I'm just using some double-sided tape so my foam isn't flopping everywhere. 
I am going to use double-sided clips go or double-sided tape. Go ahead and use clips if your machine cannot handle the double-sided tape. Putting it on the uh, long side of the zipper panel that does not have the foam. And I'm going to take my zipper and put it right sides together with this. Now I've cut my zipper a little bit longer as I always do. We will trim that up when we're all done with this. Okay, so now we're going to sew this on with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I have my zipper fit on to get nice and close to my zipper to make sure I do not have a wavy zipper. Make sure your needle's down if you have to move your zipper pulls out of the way. And you'll go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other zipper panel on the other side of the zipper tape. Okay, so that's all done. So now what we want to do is we want to make sure the seam is laying flat as we are not top stitching this because this is a drop in lining bag, but we do want the seam to stay open. So you can use glue here. I'm using double sided tape and I'm just pressing my panel far or nice and taut away from my zipper panel. I already did the other side. Um, my foam's a little thick here. I'm probably going to go ahead and trim some of that foam away so I can get this laying and sticking down nice and flat. Okay, now the zipper panel for our lining is a little bit different. So from one long edge of each panel, you're going to draw a one inch line. You're going to take some double sided tape. And again, you can use double sided tape on a domestic machine here as this will be out of the seam allowance and you're going to fold into that one inch line. So we'll have a half inch folded over. If you're using cotton, you can go ahead and press this as well. We want the seam to stay folded over like this because we will need it to stay in place when we go to do the drop in lining part of it. Okay, now we have both of those done. So we're going to take our bottom panel with the side panel, the gusset part, line up raw edge of um, each of our zipper panel pieces. The folded edges should be to the center of the panel. Okay, we're going to go sew across here with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and we want to uh, pull that seam so it's towards the bottom gusset part and top stitch through there to hold the seam in place right through the bottom not the zipper panel but through the side bottom panels go ahead and we're going to do the same thing with the other side making sure it's not twisted and matching up our ends And it's a little bit more tricky to top stitch that area because you're in a loop, but it's completely doable. Just make sure you're only sewing what you need to be sewing. There we go. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same thing with our exterior panels, except for we have a zipper in it. And we will be sewing this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance rather than a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance like we did with the lining pieces. Now the reason we do the lining pieces at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance is it makes it a little bit smaller than the bag and um, yeah, it just makes for a snugger lining so it's not so floppy. So again, so across 3 8 push the seam towards the gusset part of the bag, top stitch through that side panel there to hold that seam in place. Make sure your zipper pulls are on at this point. Bring up the other short end and repeat.
Again, you're working in a loop, but you want to push that seam towards the bottom and top stitch it in place. And that is both gusset pieces complete. Okay, so I went ahead and I installed my nameplate. Um, now from each of the bottom corners of our main panels, I'm gonna mark in 3 eighths of an inch. I'm gonna take my gusset piece. I'm going to find my centers by matching up those seams from where we attached the zipper panel, clipping it on the zipper panel part as well as on the bottom. So this is, uh, the bottom's going to seem like it's bigger than the bottom of this, and it's because part of the gusset of the black bottom part that I have here is going to fold up and become part of the side panel. This is a really, really unique construction and actually really cool. I learned something here. It was awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that my center marks are definitely center because I do not want a lopsided bag. And I'm good. We're going to match that center bottom piece with our center on our main panel. Clip it in place. Now we are only clipping the bottom of the bag right now. We will do the rest of the gusset in the next step. Okay, so from that 3 8 of an inch mark to that 3 8 of an inch mark, we are only going to sew between those marks at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Do not go over those 3 8 of an inch marks. And you're going to do the same with the other main panel and the other side of the bottom gusset panel. Okay, so this is what we have here. So now at the top corners of our main panels, we want to do exactly the same thing and mark 3 8 of an inch on both panels. Match up our centers of the top zipper panel and our main panel. You will do the same with the other side. And we're going to sew again between those 3 8 of an inch marks. Now I've taken this to my cylinder arm just because it's easier to show you. Um, at my flatbed, uh, the bag would be in the way and you wouldn't be able to see what I was sewing. So again, you can see I've started at 1 3 8 of an inch mark and sewing across to the other. This part is also a lot easier if your zipper is open. You'll do the exact same thing with the other side. Okay, so this is what we have. Zipper is open and we have just these sides. Now, if you kind of clamp the sides like this, they will fit in perfectly. And we are going to sew these sides from our where our stitching stops on the top of the bottom, which is 3 eighths of an inch. Again, sewing from mark to mark. I'm just going to use my stitch lines as my guide. And you will do the same with all four sides. If there's a little bit of a pointy hangover, that is okay. Okay, and so from this stitch line here all the way down to this stitch line here on all, th all four sides. It's really a very, very unique construction. I've never seen a uh, rectangular bag sewn like this, but it gives it an amazing shape and makes it so that zipper actually goes down the sides, which is super unique in itself. Um, Bethany, this is really a great uh, technique and I'm so happy that I've learned it. And I hope you all are happy that you learned it too. <laughs> Okay, so now we are going to do the same with our lining. I went ahead and did my zipper pocket the way I like to do it, which is down in the description below if you need the class. We are going to 
assembled the lining exactly the same way that we did the exterior except for we are going to be doing it with the 5 8 of an inch seam allowance so you will be marking in at 5 8 of an inch rather than 3 8 of an inch. Okay so here is our exterior. It looks great. Here is our lining. Okay so now um, I'm going to take and drop my lining in. If you are doing this on a flatbed, make sure you follow how Bethany does it in the pattern. It's a similar um, way, it's just done opposite with the lining, or so you can sew uh, from the inside of the bag with the uh, exterior on the inside. So the first thing I like to do for drop and lining is match up the sides first. I'm using the stitch line where I stitched my uh, zipper in as kind of a guide where I am placing uh, my lining pieces, which you want it to be slightly higher than your stitch line so you know that you are catching it um, when we go to top stitch this. So it's hard to see here because I use black thread, but there is my um, zipper stitching thing and I'm just put a st stitching line and I'm just putting the folded edge of my lining just a scant eighth of an inch higher than that you want to make sure that the lining also isn't going to get in the way of the zipper pull but if you have it just a little bit higher and you're kind of feeling around uh, making sure that the exterior and that folded lining piece match up you will be good to go go by feel with this i was feeling for the lining and the exterior as i went clip to clip kind of making sure they were lining up and that I was catching them both. So go really slow. I use a lot of clips. You can also just go by touch if you like, but this is the way that worked for me. Um, on a free arm or a cylinder arm, this is definitely easier to do on both, but if you are doing it on a flatbed, definitely follow the pattern. You will have the bag inside out and you will be sewing from the inside of the bag. All that's left to do after this is add your handles and your crossbody strap. And we're done.
all right that's it that's all what did you guys think it's such a fun sew um I forgot to mention in the intro that it was a drop in lining um my last couple of Catsiopia patterns have been a drop in lining which is amazing because I've always feared drop in linings um, and it's really teaching me new things and I'm learning they really aren't all that bad. You just need a little practice and it's all good. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, go out and, and grab this pattern. The information for where you can get it is down below and until the next one, I'll catch you next time. Bye.